Why is it necessary? Because the government's argument is that on public transport, you're sitting next to somebody for quite a long time, quite close. In shops, that doesn't happen because there's still social distancing. In public, that doesn't happen. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on actually how, how worried you are about the virus spreading. If someone is next to you and they sneeze, actually, the sneeze can, can affect you immediately or they're coughing. And they're also asymptomatic carriers, which means when they're even speaking, the particles can be moving across. So a lot of the evidence now that's emerging is actually mechanistic. It's actually about how a mask can block those particles coming out. And, you know, some estimates are it can block up to 75 percent. Others are around 15 to 30 percent. So it basically shows there is a way of blocking droplets that are moving out. And so I think at this point, it makes sense to be able to use them. And the cost of using them is so low, especially if people are willing to, you know, use cloth ones or make them at home. I mean, they've had fairly strict rules in France and Germany and Spain on wearing face masks in public. Has it worked? Well, it's difficult to, one to pick out was it actually the masks because a lot of countries introduced a whole package of measures at the same time. So the Czech Republic brought this in quite early. But I think the best that I take away from that is that we also need to be thinking in terms of a package of measures. I think there's been a mistaken view that we need to look at interventions one at a time. We have to look at the cumulative effect that these can have together, even if each alone has a weak evidence base. I mean, there does seem to be something of a pattern that the government resists doing something then says maybe you should do it, but they're not going to make it mandatory, then they make it mandatory. I guess they would say that they're just being cautious. They don't want to make people do things when it's not necessary, when it's the wrong time. Your bar for evidence is different during a crisis than during, let's say, a normal situation where there's not urgent decisions to be made. And the lack of evidence is not an excuse for inaction. Actually, it's making a decision at a point if you choose not to do something. And I think in retrospect, when lessons are learned from this crisis and going forward, let's say, to the next outbreak and what can be learned from this, I think that's going to be a huge takeaway that actually from the start, you use the precautionary principle, which is that you do things that have a, could potentially have a huge benefit when you don't fully understand the evidence base. And this is what we've seen many countries do at the start and actually do quite well. Has the government been behind the curve? Um, I think clearly, yes, we've seen from the start that many of the key measures that other countries have done from the start, let's say testing and tracing, face masks, travel restrictions, a lot of these are about timing. You want to bring them out in the early phase when you're trying to contain the outbreak to actually bring down numbers where it seems like these have been brought in. And it's not very clear the, the timing behind while they're bringing them in now. So I think in some way it's been the right measures. It's just possibly been not at the right time. Professor Devi Shidra.